Welcome back, my duelist friends. Casual Duelist back again. Got another speed duel deck list for you guys. Today we're going to be doing more of a Jinzo control. Now, what makes this deck so much fun is so much of this deck actually came off of our limitations this last list. And uh, honestly, I was pretty confident with the deck build without a skill. So I'm going to start with the Joey Wheeler. I'm just going to attack skill. Now, the way this works, and mine is not the updated errata, is once per duel you get to apply the following effects. Uh, well, during, when you choose to do this during the main phase, you can make one of your monsters uh, go by 100 until the end of the turn. And during the battle phase of that turn, when your opponent activates a trap card, you can negate the effect and set that card. So if you don't already have Jinzo up, this is a good card to go ahead and go into. And uh, you'll be able to push through one card that the opponent has in the background. Now... Going through the main, one of the first things we're going to do is uh, Breaker has beaten the allegations. So, with this guy on probation right now, he is allowed to be up to three and in combination with cards that were also on the three ups. Um, so again, this is really good. we got a walking basic MST. It's not going to have MST activation. It's going to be spell speed one as it's a monster effect instead of the spell speed two, the quick play spell card. But you guys understand what I'm saying. We get a card that variables between 16 and 1900 points and is a good addition to any board. Next up, we're going to have three copies of Cyber Dragon because, again, my boy is on probation. He is off the lists. And this allows us to just go ahead and throw a special summon as long as our opponent has monster monsters and we don't. Um, this allows us to play one then the other. Or it allows us to add some tribute fodder for our last boy because Jinzo himself is also free to go and off the list. So, just real quick, these guys were at uh, Jinzo was on the twos, he's off entirely. These two were both on the threes, they're off entirely. Um, again, this makes kind of a cool little like machine type, dark type control build. Um, I wanted to go one step further, and I wanted to use one of the new threes. I wanted to use Neospace and Grand Mole as a single. Um, just good. He's disruptive. He's going to help us do some stuff. Um, honestly, this character is uh, it's just awesome. Um, we could get rid of him, but I prefer to keep him because, again, he's just kind of uh, comically there. Um, so that is the monster lineup. Let's get you some spells. First one, we are going to utilize a single copy of Allure of Darkness. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why am I only playing one? Well, simply put, um, the other one's actually in the sideboard today. Um, and that would take care of our two ups. Um, I'm going to take care of the threes by placing two copies, Book of Moon. Again, for the most part, we should almost always have Jinzo out, um, so there really isn't any uh, reason not to play Jinzo pretty fast. Um, so like a lot of the deck is just focused on him. So Book of Moon buys you enough time to do that. We don't really have to deal with back row too, too much. Um, we are going to be using three copies Cyber Energy Shock. Now, this is also going to be quick play. And this is where the deck kind of gets a little more aggressive. Um, since you're allowed to have three Jinzos now, which nobody's arguing... Um, we can just add this. This is awesome. So if you control Jinzo on a quick play, you can target one card on the field, destroy it. And then if it happened to be a trap, you could apply one of the following effects. Technically, Jinzo could gain 800. That would be a permanent bonus. He'd jump up to 3,200. Or you could say negate the effects of one face-up card on the field until the end of this turn. That could be a monster card. Now, realistically speaking, if we've got Jinzo, we don't need to worry about the back row. And uh, this is just going to be for sneak shots at the opponent's monsters. Um, we can do this on our turn, off our turn. It's all good. Um, so that is going to be the play. We are going to carry two Night Beams. Um, and this is just in case like our opponent does have Book of Moon. If we can get him to uh, lose timing here. And I, I know somebody's going to go right off the rip. They're going to go, well... It, it, you could still activate the other card in your back row, and then you could activate the card that Nightbeam was targeting because now it is not responding to. You're right, and you can trigger both of your effects real quick. That'd be cute. Go ahead and do that. I'd love you for that. Um, 
At which point I've smoked out both of your cards and forced you to apply the effects early for one card, which is great. You do what you do. Um, but this is just in case our opponent does have some, like, Book of Moon or something nonsense. Um, it's just going to help us get through it. Um, I'm going to tap into the one-ofs for the offerings to the doomed. Um, because, again, I do understand that Book of Moon is at three. Book of Moon can have it at Jin, so it's going to let a lot of traps go through. Um, there are going to be times where I trigger something and something big happens. And we need to be able to know that we can just go ahead and pop whatever that card is. And there's only one card I can't really deal with with this deck, and that's Obelisk the Tormentor, for the obvious reason he just can't be targeted. Um, last but not least, I am running a single Waking the Dragons in the main deck, friends. Now, the reason for this is, and you guys already know, this is why I play an extra deck in every deck, is because if you play Waking the Dragons and it gets destroyed or banished, and those are the key words, guys. It's going to resolve either in the discard pile or the banish pile. Graveyard and exile. I don't care what you guys want to call it. I, I've been yelled at for that, too. It doesn't matter. Um, it does not resolve in the field. Therefore, Jinzo does not stop waking the dragon. So if you do attack my back row, you're welcome to do that. If you attack my back row, I can play Jinzo or any one of my fine fusion friends to the field. At which point, you're going to wish you hadn't attacked the back row so well. Um, so this is the main build. Um, if you guys want to go ahead and snap off that screen a screenshot, screen cap, whatever you want real quick. Or pause and make some notes. I'll be right back with the side and extra decks. Alright. So we're going to start with the side. And again, real quick, I'm going to put up my two copies of Dahlgren Mad Flame. Now... Again, we already saw a bunch of stuff I can do to this. We can go ahead, we can book him down to 1,200. Great. Jinzo and everybody else beats him. Um, we've got the Cyber Shocks. We can just straight up destroy them. We get the Offerings to the Doomed. I'm not too worried about putting this on my opponent's side of the field. Um, it's just going to help us get out of tight situations. This is how you would deal with Obelisk. Um, tributing him for the summon is actually just like a, a game rule and therefore not a targeting effect. So it, it plays. Um, sometimes you're going to need to go a little bit faster. You're going to get to your lure. Um, single copy Mind Crush. And I do carry two more Waking the Dragon just in case. Um, like I said, this allows us to either speed up and play the Jinzo. This could allow you to play the Dahlgren game too. Or let you play any one of these fine fusion friends. Get the Blue Eyes Ultimate, Psy Blade, Psy End Drag, Dark End Dragoons, Ojama King, and the TIs Restrict. And again... This feels like I'm saying this every time because people just ask every time. And it is... Waking the Dragon is a good card. And it's actually very Jinzo proof. Um, another card I can't wait to add to this is going to be this... Uh, later this year, late 2024, when we get to the Battle City Finals. Um, we will see... Um, and I, I'm going to forget what it was called. Limit Break or breakthrough skill i think it was breakthrough skill limit break is something entirely different breakthrough skill is going to be a trap that we can utilize from the discard pile banishing it and we can take a monster's effect off of it from the field and what's fun is because it you trigger you pay cost in graveyard by exile and then once banished um the effect results outside of the board um it can affect jinzo like it's a trap that affects him um, which is kind of crazy, um, because, you know, it's not Wild Heart. Like, I think Elemental Hero, Wild Heart, and cards like him that say, like, cannot be targeted or just straight up unaffected by traps would be the only one that would be, like, he keeps his ability, which is just to not be touched by the traps anyway. So, um, definitely weird, definitely different. Uh, something I'm looking forward to. Guys, if you like this deck, consider supporting the channel. It's as easy as a like, comment, sub share with your friends, or don't. Just keep the channel to yourself. Guys, I want you to go out and have a wonderful day. I'm going to try to do the same. I hope to see you guys on the next video. Later.